topic for this session is the spermatogenesis which is a process that produces male gametes in the testis tissue first of all let's have a look at the structure of testis inside the testis tissue we have this specialized tubules that are called seminiferous tubules and inside the seminiferous tubules we see the spermatogenesis process that produces sperm cells from these precursor cells that are called spermatogonium if we have a look at the cross-section of seminiferous tubule we see this structure we have an internal cavity that is called lumen and that is the place where the sperm cells are released after production into it and transferred to the outside of the testis we have germinal epithelium that consists of different types of cells including the spermatogenic cells this blue cells that are different steps of spermatogenesis and this sustentacular cells or sertoli cells that are specific cells inside the germinal epithelium that support the spermatogenesis process outside the a seminiferous tubules we have this space that is called interstitial space inside this interstitial space as you can see here we have capillaries blood capillaries and the specific cell types that are called Leydig cells the main role of this Leydig cells is the production of testosterone the male hormone and testosterone is the stimulator of the spermatogenesis process here you can see different types of spermatogenic cells during the spermatogenesis and the sertoli cells which support these cells that uh, are involved in the process of spermatogenesis but when the spermatogenesis begins as we know the spermatogenesis begins at puberty and it includes all the events by which spermatogonia these cells that are no, that are known these cells sorry these cells is spermatogonia that are known as stem cells of the testis are transferred into spermatozoa these cells that are not matured in this step and we uh, we will discuss uh, where the sperm cells uh, going to be matured at birth this spermatogonia or the stem cells of the testis are in the uh, sex cords of the testis and they are a type of cells that are large pale and surrounded by supporting cells or primary sertoli cells shortly before puberty the sex cords acquire a lumen and become the seminiferous tubules as you can see here it acquire it uh, acquire its lumen and becomes the tubule at regular intervals cells emerge from these the stem cells to form type A spermatogonia 
as we can see here type A spermatogonia and its production marks the initiation of a spermatogenesis then this type A spermatogonia undergo a limited number of mitotic divisions to form clones of cells the last cell division produces type B spermatogonia the cells that you can see here type B spermatogonia which then divide to form primary spermatocytes the cells that you can see here okay from the first step we have type A spermatogonia it divides by mitotic cells and produces type B spermatogonia type B spermatogonia divides and enters the first meiosis division and forms primary spermatocyte primary spermatocytes then enter a prolonged prophase about 22 days it takes and then by rapid completion of meiosis 1 and formation of secondary spermatocytes the cells that you can see here the sec secondary spermatocytes during the second mitotic uh, uh, sorry during the second meiotic division these cells immediately begin to form haploid spermatids the cells that you can see here haploid spermatids throughout this series of events from the time type a spermatogonia leave the stem cell population to form spermatids cytokinesis is incomplete so that successive cell generations are joined by cytoplasmic bridges as you can see here the cells from the top of the diagram until the spermatids the cells are attached together they are not uh, they do not separate completely but they have bridges between them so the cytokinesis is incomplete therefore the progeny of a single type A spermatogony form a clone of germ cells that maintain contact throughout differentiation of sperm Furthermore, spermatogonia and spermatids remain embedded in deep recesses of Sertoli cells. Here you can see very large Sertoli cells which have some recesses, deep recesses inside it and the spermatogenic cells are inside the Sertoli cells. In this manner, Sertoli cells support and protect the germ cells and participate in their nutrition and assist in the release of mature spermatozoa. But how this spermatogenesis process is supported by hormones? Spermatogenesis is regulated by LH production, luteinizing hormone, that is secreted by pituitary gland in the brain. LH binds to receptors on Leydig cells. LH binds to its receptors on Leydig cells and stimulates testosterone production by this cell 
and the testosterone binds to Sertoli cells inside the epithelium, germinal epithelium, to promote the spermatogenesis. Okay, we have LH, which is released by pituitary gland in the brain. This LH comes to the testis by blood vessels, and it binds to its receptor on Leydig cells and stimulate these cells to produce testosterone. This testosterone comes to the inside of the germinal epithelium, binds to its receptors on Sertoli cells, and Sertoli cells promote the spermatogenesis. The other important hormone that takes part in the spermatogenesis process is FSH or follicle stimulating hormone which is essential for the spermatogenesis because it binds directly to the Sertoli cells and it stimulates testicular fluid production and synthesis of intracellular androgen receptor, pro, uh, receptor proteins for the testosterone. Okay, the other important hormone is FSH, which comes from the pituitary, gl uh, pituitary gland again, from the capillaries inside the interstitial testis. Then it transfers to uh, inside the germinal epithelium and binds to its receptors on Sertoli cells and stimulates them to produce androgen or testosterone receptor on the Sertoli cells. Here you can see a look at the process by which type B spermatogonium transforms to spermatids. As I said before, type B spermatogonium produces primary spermatocyte by mitotic division. Then this primary spermatocyte enters the meiotic division and during the first meiotic division it transforms to secondary spermatocyte and then during second meiotic division secondary spermatocyte transforms to sperm when the sperm is produced another process which is called spermiogenesis begins and during this spermiogenesis process the spermatid transforms to mature sperm let's call it a sperm cell not mature because the because the maturation site is outside the testis and it occurs in the epididymis okay the spermato the spermiogenesis is a series of changes resulting in the transformation of spermatids into spermatozoa these changes these changes include one formation of the acrosome you can see here acrosome which covers half of the nuclear surface and it's a sac that contains enzymes to assist in penetration of the egg and its surrounding layers during fertilization. Okay, the first change is production of acrosome which covers half of the nucleus and it contains enzymes that help the sperm during the fertilization. Second change is condensation of the nucleus by replacement of histones by protamins. You can see a large nucleus here inside the spermatid that transforms to a very small nucleus 
inside you, head of a sperm. The third change is formation of neck. formation of neck, middle piece, and tail. And the fourth change is the shedding of most of the cytoplasm as residual bodies that are phagocytized by sertoli cells. You can see here that the spermatid have a cytoplasm, but this cytoplasm do not exist in the sperm because the excess cytoplasm is phagocytized by sertoli cells and after the phagocyte uh, uh, and after the phagocytize uh, the after the sertoli cells phagocytize this cytoplasm the sperm is released to the lumen of the seminiferous tubule in human the time required for a spermatogonium to develop into a mature spermatozoon is approximately 74 days and approximately 300 million sperm cells are produced daily. When fully formed spermatozoa enter the lumen of seminiferous tubules, from there they are pushed toward the epididymis by contractile elements in the wall of the seminiferous tubules and they transfer to the epididymis. In the epididymis, the spermatozoon obtain full motility and here we call it mature sperm. Here you see a mature sperm with its specific structure. In the head part, we have a cursor, a condensed nucleus, neck, which is a part that connects the head to middle piece, the middle piece that contains mitochondria, which produce ATP, a energy an energy supply for the motility of the sperm and the tail which is uh, a flagellum that helps the sperm to reach the place of fertilization inside the female tract. Here you see the spermatozoa uh, with the light microscope these are the sperm these are the spermatozoa of here that's all the spermatogenesis lesson is finished here thank you for your attention